Right, that's a lot. See you all next week. Oh, well, go on, go home. Hang on, just a sec. Thanks a lot, that'd be super. I just finished this. Come on, Paul. Are you sure? I want to get home. Trouble is, he still wears turn ups. Ciao, both. <laughs> Good night, Alan. Stuff. Sorry, I was just wanted him to be in. He never is. <laughs> You're an idiot. Thanks. Come here. What was that for? I haven't kissed anybody for a whole week, that's all. It's called keeping in touch. You're very good. Am I? I think so. When I need a reference, I'll look you up. Reference? <laughs> Job! Why the hell does the suburban housewife go to evening classes? Prepare for the day, hubby leaves for good. You don't take sugar. <gasps> or makes you fat. Fat may be content, but fat's not beautiful. Where is uh, working? I hope. Mm. Nine is two, I hope. We are 25,000 feet up. This is your captain speaking. For God's sake, here we are, abandoned. Let's march back out. Let's be prowlers, terrors of the streets. Young men will keep to the middle of the road after dark, always travelling in groups of not less than three. What's up, pet? You don't rush home for nothing when you know he's not here. Come on, tell Mum. Mum, she says... It's late. Sure, it's not teacher. No. Why not? I've seen his beady eyes on you. They're not beady. Oh? What colour? I haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you should be so lucky. Paul? I've been having phone calls. Oh, not calls, just... It rings, then when I pick it up, it goes down the other end. No words, nothing. You've no idea... Well, we're new here. Who do we know? Who knows us? Have you told Ken? No. Why not? Tell the police. Rubbish. Load of old tat. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know. Well, I know. You might get a quid for the frame. You're a collector. Me? No, why do I look like one? Oh, I was being personal. You don't need money to start anything antiques. Just taste and the right contact. Yeah, have another. Mm. Special? Mm-hmm. Other special? <sighs> no, getting started, that's the trouble. Now, I reckon I might make it here. Curiosity value. Well, you don't always find maggots under a dirty stone. Think of it. What a change I am to. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. That'll be 7,000 sheets, ma'am, eh? <laughs> uh. What's your line? Oh, this and that. More that than this, eh? Happy days. Cheers. I love objects. I do, I really do. I like the feel of things, know what I mean? Four square, on the ground. Tough, with a bit of history. You know, there's nothing like it. Supposing I wanted something. Oh, I'm glad I met you. There's something belonging here, at this place. Like what? I'll leave that to you. How far can you go? Four or five quid, depends what it is. Well, I'll see what I can do. Where'll you be? Here, or hereabouts. Done. Now I've got to go and see a bit of Sheffield plate. So long.
Lyle, 33829. Hello. Hello. Mrs. Um, Ken Pitt. Yes? And do you want him to know what both of us know? Know what? Please, uh... Please, stop it. I don't know what you're saying, but please stop it. You have nothing to hide. You're sure? Think. Think. No thinking, good. And that's worth a lot of money to keep quiet, isn't it? I'm not thinking anything. Who are you? I shall notify the police. Ken wouldn't like that. He'd want things kept quiet. Quite right. I mean, he wouldn't want anyone to know. Would he, a man in his position? And I'm prepared to help you. Yes, you. How does the wife, the attractive wife of someone like Ken, spend her time when he's away? All that time. Hello? He's on the phone now. He's blackmailing me. Look here! Did he hear your voice? I don't know. If he knows you're here, he won't phone. <laughs> I have that effect on people. Ken. Ken. We don't want to hurt Ken, do we? We want him kept innocent. Both of us. Papa, look. Look at me. What did you say, Pat? It can't matter that much. It does. What? Everything. Oh, we were only taking time to, to build up all this. It can't crumble. Nobody's going to stop this. Well, why should they want to? Look, Pat, you can tell me. Why? Don't you trust me? I don't trust anybody. I don't know. I don't know what I think for you. All I know is I told you enough. Oh, I don't know. There's a streak in Ken. He believes things anybody tells him. <laughs> OK, so he's a suspicious bastard and they know that. I love him. Good, so tell him. Don't you see? I don't want to. Why are you killing me? In college, bless him, I was at least mother. They used to come and cry on my bed. I never did. No. Your dad must have been a sign writer. Please do not touch. Helps an insult to you, isn't it? I'm falling apart. It's not no that. No appeal, male or female. How could it be my best friend? Won't tell me. Let me help. How? Parker? Yes? I saw your name in the tobacconist. Oh, so I just played to advertise. We wondered if you could help us. We? Yes. Better come into the office. Okay, you see. Look, it's not my job to guess why you're here. If you want to tell me anything, do. If not, do... Barbara's being blackmailed. Uh, threatened. Go to the police. No. If you're worried about the scandal... Oh, they can do... hang themselves for all I care. In any case, we're new here. So how are you being blackmailed? Phone calls. Seven, eight. This time he spoke. How new are you here? Nine months. And where were you before, Mrs... Um... Barbara Pitt. Lester. What does your husband do? He's an electronics engineer at Lockington's. And at Leicester? Yes. Why did you move? For the job. 
I want you to find this man. He has to ask uh, Just questions. find him. Is anything this man says true? No. Well, what does he say? He knows Ken's name. And he said, do I want Ken to know what both of us know? And what's that? For God's sake, nothing. I do nothing. And when did these calls start? Three weeks ago. Does that mean anything to you? <clears throat> no. Look, nobody does nothing, Mrs. Pitt. What do you do? Where do you go? Who do you meet? I get up. I make breakfast. Ken leaves. I clean what there is to clean. No job? No. Why, well, I've got children. No. I make myself lunch. I shop in supermarkets to save pennies. I don't talk to anybody because I don't know anybody and they don't know me. Well, this man does. Once a week, Polly and I go to evening classes. English. Who runs them? Oh, a teacher from St Edmunds, Alan Lipton. Otherwise, I wait and I wait and I wait. Well, what for? Ken. This voice, do you recognise it at all? No. Well, is it young, old, uh, I, rough, I don't know. It, I don't know. It's, it's like yours, sort of a neutral. Would you know it if you heard it again? Yes. Are oh, you seem very sure? Telephones distort, you know. Because I can hear it now. That's why. Because it drills in my head. Why? 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 I don't know why it does. Will you help? Hmm. Yes. What's her address? Oh, 14 Marshwood Court. Slough, double three eight two nine. Yeah, I won't phone. She's had enough of the telephone. Is there anything I can do? Yes, you tell your friend next time she's not to lie. It's just that I'm thinking of employing him and I would like to know the date of his release. Kenneth Pitt, B-I-T-T. Leave and, and I don't know where to go. So I checked out Mexico and I checked out Ireland and I checked out England. So next I am going to Australia, I think, in South Africa. Bob! Places. Do you think you uh, will go to South Africa? I think so, yes. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going. Oh. Well, my race is in a minority. What's up? Mm, don't. What's up? Nothing. Nothing. Something's up. You want something? Oh, I've eaten. Look, is there something or not? Yes. Well, then I've got a right to know. Don't shout, please. Look, it's three little words. I mean, you're the one with the brains. Come on, what's the matter? Somebody keeps telephoning me. He wants money. What for? What did he say? He said we'd want it kept quiet. You wouldn't want anybody to know. But I've been inside. Well, they know that at Lockington. And he said... We'd want you kept innocent. And he said, how does the wife of someone like Ken spend her time when he's away? How many times? Eight, nine. Help me. You haven't told the police? Well, it's a joke. It's a joke, come on. It's not a joke. I'm here, you're not. I'm waiting all day for that damn thing to ring. I'm here. Well, you're not getting a job. I want to prove I can keep you, and I mean it. OK, so it's inverted snobbery. But I will. There's, um, but there's nothing in it, is there? What? Huh?
bar? What? I'm sorry. You hurt. Well, I won't ask again. I don't apologize. Now I am. Oh, no, I hurt, Spar. You're all very beautiful, aren't you? Suspicious, clumsy, ugly old sod who doesn't learn. I know you've done your waiting, but I know that, I can feel it, but you've got to give me a chance to make up for it. It's the only thing I'm any good at, is figures. Nothing's got to get in the way of that job, but I've got it. I want to make it work. It's got to work. I mean, I can do things on my own. Things I can offer you. I mean it. All right. What's that bloke's name again? Mr. Marco. Come on, bitch. You're a little. You're a little. Come on. Yes, you will. Look, kid. Don't you? Always don't. say this. If you don't hit Churchill here, we'll hit you. Why? Because we say. Now, go on. I'll give you five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Now it's your turn. Come on. Hit him. Hit him. He just hit him. Hit him. Come on. Hit him. Come on. That's it. Come on. Hit him. Come on. That's it. Come on. That's right. Got it! Shuka, boil. Tomorrow you're in it. I mean it. You hear me saying anything then, sir? You did nothing to stop it. I was just passing. It's a free country. Yeah, well, all four of you. Tomorrow morning, my room, 11 o'clock. No break. You two, get out. Walk! Can I help you? Is it Mr. Lipton? Yes. Your parent? Can I go, please, sir? I've got a job. If I was a parent, I'd want to deal with him. Go on. Shuka! Some decisions are best not left to parents, Mr. Marker. No, I'm not a parent. I want to join your evening class. Oh, fine. You're going to let them get away with it? Oh, no. There's one thing I can't stand. Blackmail. Blackmail? Oh, the whole system's one of blackmail, Mr... Mark. Marker. Do well or else. Don't expect us to help you, understand you, take into account where you come from, where you go home to. Oh, come to a brand new school and be taught by methods 30 years out of date. Oh, man, I'm sorry. One enrollment form. Fill it in now, it'll save time. Yeah. Marker. Initial? F. Address? 93 High Street, Eaton. Trade or occupation? Uh, inquiry agent. Really? Yeah. It's funny. What? Whenever I say that, people look guilty. And you're inquiring into English literature? D yes, why shouldn't I? No reason. What put you onto us? Friends. Polly Bevins and Barbara Pitt. Nice friends? Mm. Very nice for you. <laughs> Teaching pretty young women. What does your wife think about it? I'm not married. Are you? No. Oh. You involved with uh, ex-prisoners? Yes, in an amateur kind of a way. Ah, no wonder you don't like punishment. Oh, you know about prisons. D what sort of a amateur kind of way? If people want help, I give it if I can. Why? Because if I were in a fix, I'd want someone to help me. I mean, we're all criminals. The lucky ones don't get caught. Am I being interrogated? <laughs> Where do I pay this V? Here, Thursday. And uh, this is our basic reading list. What will you do with those two boys tomorrow? Tomorrow's tomorrow. Today, I had to stop myself from flaying Shuka alive. Oh, dear. Very violent. But tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after that for a month, he'll carry home for me whatever I need to be carried. I promise. He said you lied. Well, I don't like letting go the whole of myself. You don't want him. OK, if you don't want him, it'll save money. And you won't go to the police. No. So you just hang around here, moping, waiting for something to happen. But get a job. Do something. Get out of this place. You can teach. No. Why not? Ken has his reasons. You make every allowance for him, and he demands everything from you. That's our concern. 
You just have to take it from me. If I get a job, it'll hurt him. Why me? There's nothing illegal or freakish staying at home. You do. Why did you teach? <laughs> Put me in front of a class of eight-year-olds that end up mentally backward by Easter. Leave it. Come on, we're going out. Get your coat. Going to reach the map. It might be. Come on. All right. All right, all right. Special. Pint, sir? Sorry. Well, he said you said I lied. Well, did you? You said that your husband was an electrical engineer at Leicester. He studied at... At the university? Now, my job, sometimes, on most times, is pretty humdrum. Plodding around, putting bits of sad fact together. But, every now and again, you go on a kind of instinct, a suspicion, a smell. Like the smell of prison waiting rooms. Now, you say Leicester to me, and you could be saying Broadmoor, Durham, Pendleville. I thought I was being very careful. Yes, the women in prison waiting rooms are careful, too. Careful to give the opposite impression to the one they're feeling. I made some phone calls, Mrs. Pitt. It's very easy to find out once you know where to ask. He did 18 months. He used to be so full of... fizz. Open. How did he get the job at Lockington's? He applied. Did they know about him? Yes. Does everybody know about him? Well, they're proud of their scheme for resettling people. Has he made any enemies since he's been there? No. He works too hard. Does she know Alan Lipton? No. I mean, he wouldn't know me if he'd seen him. Why? Was your husband on probation? Yes. He came out on parole six months earlier. And that finished three weeks ago, just when the phone call started. Yes. See, if they'd wanted to muck up his probation, they'd have tried earlier. Nothing makes sense. It would, if the blackmail was to do with you and not with your husband. I've told you, there's nothing. Yeah, but what did you do in Leicester? I didn't want to come to you, Mr. No, Marker. but you did. Polly, Bo Mr. Marker. What would happen if I were to pay this man to stop it all? Barbara. Well, there been some more calls. None that I've answered. Say I'll want to pay. But it means that either there's something in it or that you don't need me. I want to pay. You pay once and you go on paying. You know that. Eh? Very nice. Better than pictures. And the fair one is full of history. Mr. Marker? She didn't mean it. She's terribly worried. Come, on. Come in. Come in. Sit up. What do you think? It's no longer my concern, is it? Oh, it is. I'll go on paying you. Now, why should you do that? Because it's her. Why, she's so special. <laughs> Have you ever lived in suburbia? Friends, real friends of more market value than houses. I knew her in college. What was she like? Quiet. You're not. I mean, why are you? Attraction of opposites. Then we lost touch and I met her again about six months ago on a bus. She just moved in. What have you found out? Nothing. But you said you made a lot of I calls. told you nothing. Not as easy as all that. It's your job. How quiet was she in your college? She worked hard. No playing around? She wanted very much to become a teacher. It was all she wanted. Didn't she? Apparently not. Apparently, she got married to Ken. Apparently? She married Ken. All I know about her is what she tells me, what she lets slip. Do you believe her? Well, why ever not? Well, she lied to me about her husband. 
But I can understand her being defensive. I can understand her being nervous. But why is she so miserable? You would be, for God's sake, if you'd lost a baby. When was this? 18 months ago. You haven't done your homework, have you? <laughs> Mrs. Pitt. Yes, the great Gatsby. Yes, you like it? Yes, very much. Why? I like the madness of the people. I know they could afford to be mad, but they weren't afraid of doing mad things. They weren't stick in the muds. They weren't ordinary. You like extraordinary people. I'm married to one. For the married couple in the book, Daisy and Tom, they weren't likable. No, but they weren't boring. They abused each other. They abused everything. Example. Their treatment of their little girl. To them, she was candy floss, to be brought out on special occasions and then put back in cellophane. Do you believe in Daisy's love for Gatsby? Yes. Why? I think it's possible to love outside marriage. Her husband was a pig. Gatsby could give her something that Tom couldn't himself. So you think an attractive wife like Daisy with a husband like Tom who's off when he feels like it, Daisy's entitled to to spend the time while he's away, a great deal of time. Well, how? We're talking about a book. Gatsby's don't grow on trees in suburbia. Okay. We'll hear it all back. I think it's possible to love outside of marriage. Her husband was a pig. Gatsby could give her something that Tom couldn't himself. So you think an attractive wife like Daisy with a husband like Tom who's off when he feels like it, Daisy's entitled to, to spend the time while he's away a great deal of time. Well, how? We're talking about a book. Gatsby's don't grow on trees in suburbia. Okay. We'll hear it all back. Ma? Ma? He told me to come over. Ma, leave me be. What was the matter? Nothing. You look all touch me too much. There was something there, wasn't there? I don't know. In the... Please, I'm all right. In the voices, in the playback. <laughs> It wasn't the voice. No, but it was like it. How? But it might point to a person. No, it was only in the recording. No, a person about Lipton's age, with his kind of background. I mean, not rough, not vulgar. No, no. Well, don't get upset. Oh, for God's no. sake, you can't stop touching me. I don't want to be touched. I want us to be left alone. I want us. I don't want you. I don't want people. Yeah, I'm in here. Hello. Um, What's the matter? Mm. You're shivering. Has he been at you again? No, True? Uh, yes. I'm just glad to be back. You're strange. No. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. Thank you.
Mr. Marker? Yeah. It's Ken Pitt speaking. Oh, yes. Look, uh, could you come over to Lockington, sir? It's about my wife. Yes, all right. I'll be right over. Three, three, eight, two, nine. Oh, no. Please, please. Can it just listen? Please. Listen. Good. Look, I don't want to make a big thing of this. All I want, 50, Barbara. How do you know my name? 50. These aren't empty threats, Mrs. Pitt. Don't think I can't spread it around. This is a very small place. If you leave us alone, I'll pay. I'll pay. Ken had a word with you last night, Barbara. I'm glad. I had to push you a bit, didn't I? You'd been very silly not playing along. I'll ring again later. Your name Marker? Yeah, that's right, Mr. Pitt, is it? Yeah. He's ringing me now. This nice voice ringing rings you up. You when? Well, yesterday, here. This nice voice rings up. Ask her about the estate, Ken. Estate? What estate? Oh, I don't know. Could be a car. Could be where we lived. We've never had a car. But if you don't know, why don't you ask your wife? Because I might not want to know. And when you're mad about someone, there are some stones you don't want turned over. And you think I do know? Or you're involved in some oh, kind yes. of. Oh, yes. Yeah, and with a smashed up office for my pains, too. Mr. Pitt, you want the business settled, do you? Yes. You want your wife helped? I'm a husband. Then can we please cut through this cloud of half answers, please? And everybody's so busy defending everybody else's tender spots, we're getting nowhere. All right. I don't think this has got much to do with your having done bird. I was going to ask you if you'd made any enemies. No, not that I know of. If his voice has started to bring you in, he obviously knows something. Well, what something? Something to do with your wife. Probably while you were away. I don't think you're blackmailing your own wife. You what? You know, your voice on the phone, it's... Uh, I don't know, but it, it's not right. Anyway, it's up to you. I know that some families like to keep some stones unturned, but if it's a good enough marriage, It'll stand most questions. Probably all you need is a third party to ask the questions. Hmm? All right. You go easy on her, Mr. Marker. She's a golden girl. She's st stuck by me. She's got nobody. When I first saw her, I didn't reckon I had a monkey's chance, but she got the fireworks going in me. You know what I mean? Even now, I only have to see her standing in a doorway, and I'm shivering. She's mine. All right. But how long? Thanks. How long after you lost the baby were you still inside? Eleven months. Yeah, I reckon it was one of the factors getting me parole. But did you make any enemies while you were in there? Well, any friends? No, I kept myself to myself. It's hard, but you have to or you get grey like the others. But, so nobody visited your wife on your invitation? Well, she visited me. She never missed. But did you live with relatives or what? No, I was, she... I was on my own. So you had no idea about anything she did unless she told you? I did nothing. Well, for 11 months? It's 40 odd weeks. It's a hell of a lot of lonely days. But he knows your name, he knows your husband's name. Yeah, I'm sorry, but after a terrible mishap like yours, you must have visited, I don't know, doctors, you must have gone out to shop, you must have gone out to eat. And the state cars, one with the back? Yes. Yeah. And I know what he's saying. <laughs> it was nothing, nothing at all. We used to wait in Charles Street for a bus in his estate. Who? 
I was ashamed. No. No. I couldn't bear to be seen at the clinic. I was a freak. A baby's born every second, and I... I looked in a shop window, and I said out loud, I'm a freak. Incomplete. Everybody was too polite to say anything. I used to arrange to be the last to be checked because I wanted to slip home in the dark. He drove me to the bus stop half a dozen times. Who? Dr. Spencer. So there is something? No. We just sat there talking. I mean, I was all right medically. I probably didn't need to go as often as I did, but I just wanted to talk to somebody, anybody. When the bus came, I'd get out, he'd drive away. He had a wife and two children. <laughs> That's all. He wants 50 pounds for that. What? What 50 pounds? He rang. He's going to ring later to arrange things. Well, when exactly? Later. <laughs> We're clean, Ken. That's but all there is. Why didn't you tell me about it before, Bar? I'm sorry. I'd forgotten, but it was nothing. Did he ever touch you? No. No, what? Why believe him and not me? Uh, let's uh, pay and forget this. Oh, no, we're going through with this. I want to murder that fellow, because if he's right, I want to roll him for telling me, and if he's wrong, I'll hurt him for hurting you. Is we'll sit by that bloody phone, you, me, and Marco, and we'll wait. Oh, we'll wait. Does Lipton live near here? Yeah, a hundred yards away. So you see him quite often? Sometimes. Well, who's Lipton? If he rings... Who? Lipton? The voice, whoever it is. If he rings, make all the arrangements you like. I'll ring back. Why? I want to find out who smashed up my office. I'm thirsty. Why didn't you tell me about it before, Bar? Because you believe anything anybody told you, not me. You think I'm too bright, I'm bound to be lying. I give you me, why can't you give me you? Ah, oh, Mr. <laughs> Marker. Yes. Inquiring again. I, don't, I want to borrow a book. Come in. What book? Well, it isn't for me, actually. It's a Barbara Pitt. Uh, she lives just around the corner. She wants to borrow, I mean, if you've got one, um, the same sort of book as the one she had before. I mean, but the same author. Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Why couldn't she come herself? Oh, but she doesn't do that, does she? Mr. Marker. Has she been here? No, look, what's Would the... you like her to come for the book herself? What are you implying? Do you watch her? I mean, you can from here, can't you? She's a married woman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get out. Do I? This is my house. Who well, you invited me in? But I decide who stays. Haven't you got the book, then? If Mrs. Pitt wants a book, she can come here at any time and ask me herself. I'll do all I can to help her. Not threaten her? For 50 pounds? Mr. Marker, I don't like you very much. I suspect your motives and I detest your manners. I'm a professional. What am I supposed to be guilty of? You barge in oh, here. Oh, you're not on trial. I don't think you've done anything. Well, you're underpaid, but pff, evening class fees don't lead to blackmail. What? But you are a helper. Well, I wouldn't go two feet to help you. But you want to help Barbara Pitt? She's very bright. Very good to have in a class. Someone you can bounce ideas off. Unlike the normal run-of-the-mill, keen but thick lot, hmm? She's in trouble. Will you help her? Do you like her? Yes. Then save her marriage. 
And how, for God's sake, how? I don't know. No, I don't think you do, Mr. Martha. There are times when I get fed up, deeply fed up, with the wet nurse side to my job. When did I last have five minutes to myself? This place, it, it's like through junction. When did I have five minutes to keep abreast of things? And now you! Well, who comes here, then? The lot. Uncle Tom Cobbley, the boys, the prisoners, you. And what do I do to help? I don't help. I don't do much. I just make myself or this place available. But they come here? Yes. Sometimes I wish I were just thick and stupid and could ignore people. And to get here, this is a cul-de-sac, they'd have to pass Barbara Pitt's place, wouldn't they? You haven't been listening to me, have Has you? Have any of them been here in the last three weeks? Who? Ex-prisoners. Two. From around here? One of them. Can I have his name and address? <laughs> Look, you can't expect but me to... But you're not legally bound. You're not a prison visitor, are you? No. Is this man about your age with a nice, light, respectable voice? Yes. Yeah, but daft enough to smash up an inquiry agent's office? Yes. Who was it, Lester? I can't give you the name. Mr Lipton, we both know about prison wives, don't we? We've seen them. They're brave, nervous women, and their whole lives are a fake. Once a week, they doll themselves up to look like the best picture their men can see. For an hour. And then they go home. To empty houses. They're the most vulnerable people we know, I reckon. They're like abandoned children. Barbara Pitt's a prison wife. I love you. Look. Mr. Marker. Oh, it's you. Is it arranged? Y yes, she's got it all fixed up. Whereabouts? Um, by the ridge on the west side. All right. Will you be there? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Don't you worry. Well, be there right away. Yes. Hackney. 
false pretenses. The library. Well, Kenny, you've done well. You've used your abilities, Kenny. You've got on. Don't hurt me, Kenny. You can't blame me for trying, how can you? Have your money back. Oh, I did time for thieving, sign, not GBH. And I know all about you, sign. I know where you live.